My high school has a giant A on a hill. It was a steep little hike to get up the hill, but every class did it to paint their class color. Freshmen were green, sophomores were red, juniors were black, and seniors were white. My school was having a normal Friday night football game. I was just another kid going to the game. But before the game, my friends and I wanted to paint the A green, so I decided to bring a can of spray paint up the hill. There were some seniors up there, so we climbed above the A out of the sight of the seniors. And after about 15 minutes of waiting, they wouldn't leave. Lucky for me, however, it started drizzling. Once I saw the seniors climb down the hill and cross the street to go to the football stadium, I took out the can of green spray paint and started painting the A. Some of it got on my hand, but I finished painting the A, and as soon as I was finishing, the rain stopped. By the time we finished painting, it was dark, so we all took our phone flashlights and started waving it so people inside the stadium could see, and we were shining it on the A. Many people in the stands saw and started waving their flashlights in sync with ours. After a few minutes of waving the flashlights, I looked down at the trailhead of the hike and saw the same seniors as before lighting up a joint and holding baseball bats. Once they finished smoking their joint, they started heckling the group to come down. We stood our ground, and after about 10 minutes, they left. After they crossed the street to go back to the stadium, we all started walking down the trail and entered the football game about 45 minutes late. I met up with the rest of my friends, and it was just a normal football game. At halftime, I asked one of my friends to see if the A was still white since I knew the senior saw me. My friend called and said that some sophomores had painted over it and seniors were painting it now. I told him to come back to the football game, and thanks. The game ended around 10, 10.30 and all of my other friends left. So it was just me and one other friend. For the sake of the story, let's call him... Dan. Dan and I hiked up the hill to confirm the call, and we saw a group of 10 seniors with their faces with bandanas. They asked us what grade we were in, and Dan and I both said that we were freshmen. All of a sudden, one of them grabbed my shoulders and pretended to shove me down. He pushed me, then caught me at the same time. Then, in retaliation, I did the same thing to the guy. We were probably 75 feet up this unstable hill with loose dirt and rocks. Then the guy who almost pushed me down said I couldn't do that, and that it was different because he was a senior. And then he saw my hand with dried green paint on it. He asked me if I knew anything about the A being green. I obviously lied and said no. All the seniors stood behind him, and they all took out switchblades. At that sight, Dan and I started sprinting full speed down the hill while one of the seniors was recording us and calling us wimps. Once we reached the bottom, Dan realized that they were chasing us down the hill, so we sprinted farther. They kept chasing us, so we hid underneath a car. I had to put my hand over Dan's mouth to slow down his breathing. We saw four pairs of feet sprinting past the car, and once they were out of eyesight, Dan and I got up from the car. Once we got up and dusted ourselves off, I texted my dad to pick Dan and me up. The day after this incident, the senior messaged me on Instagram, threatening me and saying he knew who I was. I never reported the incident, and as far as I know, the senior never threatened Dan. I want to include a possible trigger warning about sexual harassment and CP for anyone that is sensitive towards these topics. First of all, I would like to say that I am not the only victim of this person. This is just a recount of my experiences being harassed and stalked by this guy. Junior year, I began getting followed on social media by a shit ton of fake accounts. These accounts would go after the hot girls at my high school. A double-edged sword, I was included in this group. At first, it was just a bunch of random message requests, which could easily be ignored. Then, one morning, I woke up to the sight of one of the most disgusting things I had ever seen. Worse than when I was tricked into watching two girls one cup in middle school. I had been tagged in the pick of a micro penis that I can only assume this garbage guy had. I mean, this thing looked like if a baby elephant in the womb had a growth stunt that affected its trunk. Gross. Untagged, blocked, and reported. The account was deleted eventually, and all was well in my 16 year old world for a while after. Beginning my senior year, more of these accounts began to pop up, 
this time impersonating people at our school. I began getting threats almost daily from different users, posing as my fellow classmates, about how they were going to send nude photos of me to my family, college, and post them to the internet if I didn't do as asked, which was to send explicit photos of myself. I also received a threat about sending a photo of me hitting a jewel to my college, which I thought was hilarious but scary at the same time due to the fact that the photo was only saved on my Snapchat memories. I've never been a mean girl, but when someone crosses me with threats, I leap into fight mode. I had no nude photos, so I knew he was bluffing, but I still played along at first to see what the guy wanted from me. Fortunately for me, the guy wasn't too bright. I ended up telling at least 15 of these accounts that I knew they were bluffing and had they kept the act as if they were multiple different people at our school. Not to mention, it was eerie that he obtained this photo of me jeweling that I had not posted to any form of social media. I graduate and I'm not too concerned about it anymore since I knew I was going off to college soon. However, he took it up a notch that summer, hacking multiple girls' social media accounts and even got his hands on one of my friend's nude photos that was saved in my eyes only section of Snapchat and sent it to me, pretending to be her coerced, explicit photos out of me. About a week later, his IP address was traced. It turned out to be a guy in my graduating class. He was charged with 21 counts of child pornography and coercion. The threats and fake accounts ended for a while, but after he was released from jail at the end of my freshman year of college, I received a random ad from one of the common aliases he used on Snapchat. Thankfully, I still had the screenshots of the messages he sent under that same alias years back. I was already friends with some of his other victims, but they had not been added by the account. I reported all evidence to the police and ended up being the whistleblower to his probation violation, which led to his arrest again. It still creeps me out to this day that he persisted for years to try and solicit explicit photos from teenage girls, and how I passed him in the halls without knowing who he was, that he was the one attempting to blackmail me for his sexual pleasure. And not to mention, he was also photoshopping the faces of minors onto new naked selfies of women. Creepy classmate went to jail for rape? Please imagine this being read by r slash. It makes the story way better. For context, I went to an alternative high school and many students, not most but many, had had interactions with the law and had ankle bracelets or had been to juvenile detention. It's also relevant that I'm in a relationship and was still in it during this time. This guy's name wasn't Joe, but, but it suits this just because I think that's a pervy name. Also, it rhymes with hoe. Sorry to any non pervs slash hoes named Joe. Joe was in my science class. I thought he was nice at first. We rode the same city bus home from school and would be friendly at the bus stop. When we would ride a different bus, he would wait at my stop for me, which felt nice, I guess. But then, shit goes progressively weirder. He would brag about things that wouldn't make sense to brag about. He was pretty out of touch with reality in that he was unaware of how others perceive him. For example, he thought he was cool because he played the flute, and he acted like he was hot shit because of it, when in actuality no one ever heard him play, nor did they really give a shit. He generally walked around with that I have a big dig attitude that's a dead giveaway of a eh, tiny one. You probably know what I mean. I started noticing these things sort of embarrassingly late in our acquaintanceship slash friendship slash oh, whatever. It got even weirder though. We would play games on the bus like like never have I ever when he would say weird sexual things like never have I had anal sex and stuff. He would ask me about my sex life and would tell me about his when I did not ask. He would get way too detailed about it too, and it made me physically sick to be honest. 
It really showed the way he viewed women. The disgusting way he talked about the body parts of the girl he was sleeping with. It seriously gave me chills. I started to express to my other friends, who also knew Joe, that he made me pretty uncomfortable. I thought I might be the only one, that maybe I was just perceiving things wrong. To my surprise when I told them, I felt like he was creepy. They told me they felt it too. Everyone agreed that there was something really off about Joe. One day I was in another class with Joe and I had no recollection of what we were talking about and I didn't want to be sitting by him. He just sat next to me, which made me uncomfortable. Again, he's not in touch with reality, so no amount of hints would show him I am not interested in being his friend. Anyways, I was zoned out of the conversation, actually trying to get some work done, and I hear him talking about murder. He said something, I don't remember exactly what, but something crazy enough that I responded with a uh, I really hope you're not implying that you've killed someone, because it really sounds like it. He got this disturbed smirk on his face as if he thought it was cool and powerful and mysterious and just said, Maybe. I don't know. He was obviously trying to tell us he killed someone. I doubt it was the truth. I think it just gave him an ego boner to try to make people think he did. I told my counselor. Not scared because it was obvious bullshit, but, but was concerned that he would hurt someone since, in the same conversation, he was talking about stabbing people with a knife. She knew I was creeped out by him, and she said tell his advisor. Fast forward a little bit. I avoid him a lot, but still see him on the bus. I don't sit by him anymore, and he gets butt hurt, but I don't care. I just pretend to be on the phone with my partner or doing homework. One week he wasn't on the bus at all, and I asked some of my friends if they'd seen him, and they said he was talking about how he had to go to court about something. We had a 14 day drop at our school where, if you have missed 14 consecutive days, you're automatically unenrolled. You better believe we counted down the days until he was gone for good. Still curious about why he left, I asked around to find more about him and how others felt about him. Apparently, he had been on probation for sexual assault the entire time I'd known him. Part of his contract was that he couldn't have physical contact including hugs with anyone, and he couldn't talk to girls outside of school. As in, he couldn't text them, call them, hang out with them, all of which he did frequently. I had absolutely no idea that he wasn't allowed to. I felt lied to because at first he did seem nice. And afterwards, he made me uncomfortable by texting me multiple times a day and asking for hugs. And if I had known he was on probation, I could have told someone and not have to deal with him. Turns out that two of his friends reported him to his PO for violating probation by being around girls all the time and hugging people and things like that that he wasn't supposed to do. Other people found out about it, and several different people came forward about being sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, and even raped by Joe. I was not at all surprised. The stories were heartbreaking. One girl was forced to perform oral sex on him at a movie theater. Another one was raped by him. Where I live, if charged with these crimes, you're tried as an adult. So while he may now be in a juvenile facility, his charges will not drop when he's 18. Instead, he will be transferred to an adult prison for several years. Glad I never had to see that asshole again. I definitely dodged a bullet. It's pretty likely that there would have been more victims had he not gone to jail when he did. His teachers don't talk about him, and classmates either celebrate his absence or just don't even think about him. Now that the school year is over and I've graduated, even if he gets out of jail early, I never had to see his nasty face again.